Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Archie. Archie and Jughead. Archie and Trees Riverdale. Archie Comics. Never heard of it. Riverdale TV show? Oh, kids these days. We're on, by the way. Who's this? Oh, we're on? That's Superman. No, I was joking. about to say, surely you know who Superman is. <laughs> we're on know? right now? Do you know who that is up there? Is the podcast running? No. Are we recording? No. I've been recording for the last several seconds. Why didn't you tell me we're recording? <laughs> you don't know who Captain Benjamin Sisko is? No. Captain Benjamin Sisko was the commander of Deep Space Nine and series season one. I believe my series season two, he was promoted to captain, which I was puzzled by. He was a lieutenant commander at Wolf Wolf 359 when the Borg, you know, during the um, Best right. of Both Worlds, right. I believe it was called the, the two-parter Next Generation, during that battle, he survived. And then was sent to Deep. Why are we talking about that's Star Trek? When the, that's when the Borg attack. Yeah, he was. He was. That's like the right. pilot episode of Deep Space Nine. Yeah. And then he gets promoted and sent out. What's your favorite Star Trek series? Oh, it's got to be Deep. Uh, uh, Next Generation. Next Generation. Okay. I'm in love with Picard. I'm super excited about Picard or Cisco. Uh, definitely Picard. Picard yeah. is is straight up. Uh, Cisco's a clone of Picard to me. He is, but but Cisco is a little more risque. Man. Like he does what he has to do, but Picard's there. I, not, I think not, they are kind of Picard's. Yeah, yeah. Picard's by the rules. Cisco's by the rules, but Cisco would like kind of yeah go a little He'll bit his own every way. once in a while. And do some stuff. <laughs> Bust your chops. I, I really like the fact that like well, they were worried that the show was kind of draining, and so they went ahead and brought in War. Brought in Michael War. <laughs> this is. Yes, are Commander. we really recording? Yes. This podcast is about board games. This is the Board Game Snobs. Welcome to the show. My name is Jerry. I am the primary host of this podcast. And this podcast banters that is false. at the beginning, but then transitions nicely into discussing modern <laughs> board games. <laughs> Segways. Segways. Or hard, hard merges. Hard merges. With me Patent pending. is my dear friend, my one and only, whom I could never replace unless I had a monetary incentive to do so. Gobby and Enrique's here as well. Hey, uh, with uh, us today. Oh, wait a second. With Enrique. me today is Jerry and Enrique. Hello there. A brief statement Hello regarding there. our last podcast. Hello, Obi Wan. We are not sponsored. Your father. By Zatarans. They send a cease and do cyst. A cease and do cyst. Yes. <laughs> so we must <laughs> cyst, apparently. Because we had our marketing, please our marketing do handled, cyst. our marketing is handled by Plagiarist, and he <laughs> apparently just decided that we were sponsored by Zatarans, and we offended most of the people in the greater Louisiana area because apparently Zatarans and is San still Francisco a thing down there and San Francisco. I have a hat. East coast to west coast, baby. I have a Zatarans hat. East coast. I like New England IPAs. I don't like IPAs. I am now. I am full blown Icelandic beer. Vladi. Why do you saying Icelandic? Because there's no T in it. It's a word. It's a word. It's a D. Vlad and Christopher have sold me on Iceland beer, and I'm forever there. Is it cold? Yes. Mm. It's cold. I like it cold. I don't know. Should you drink at room temperature? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Mm. I've never been to Europe. Do they really drink their beers room temperature? I spent a week in London. And I spent several weeks in Poland, and there was not a lot of ice in terms of, like, ice from the refrigerator. Like, they drank a lot of their liquids chilled or room temperature. Really? Chilled. Slightly chilled. Slightly chilled. Everybody but, chilled. But not like how we like it here, like a scads of ice. Welcome to the Ice Age. I need somebody to settle something for me. All of our listeners do it. that are in the European area. At your area. service. Is IPAs, are those a thing, or is that relegated to just the Americans? It's called an India Pale Ale. Indian, so not would, India. Indian. 
Oh. <laughs> okay, so it's not... I'm going to stop you right there. It's not being made. It's Indian? It's, it's not an Indian? It, no, no, no. All these beers are not from Indian? <laughs> no, no. India? It's... It's an IPA. Wow. So I think that is just an American thing. And we in America. America, you America, American. I, like, I don't say America. I think I did American I'm thing. embracing my accent. So here in America, we tend to take things and we do our own spin things. on them. So you just said things. Things. You don't say things. I don't say things. You said things. things. And you just said, I don't have an accent. I don't have an accent. Yes, but I'm you do. It. You just said things. Why don't you just mind your business? And you say thank. Well, like when I'm thinking, you say, I was thinking the well, other day. Sometimes I like, like Who are you thinking? I like to thank, thank deeply. You. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Appreciate you. Enrique just handed me this. Uh, craft beer. Let's see. There are not more than a few dozen pale L's made in Germany. The new wave of European breweries inspired by the American craft beer revolution make plenty of IPAs, though. They are probably easier to find here, meaning in America, though. Most European drinkers... Not craft beer nerds like we have here in the U.S. in abundance have probably never heard of an IPA like we make in America. Huh. Most English IPAs are tame in comparison, though that's not a comment on their quality. They probably won't like it if they do because it's not in German or English tradition. So that answers my question. The question being, does German and English uh, countries, do they have IPAs or things of that nature? And I highly suspect that they don't. Because when I was in Poland, when I was in Krakow... Man, you talk a lot. There was no dark beers. You just talked. Is there something you'd like to talk about? This is literally a podcast. Literally a podcast. This is what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to talk about board games. I'd like to talk about a board game. Why do yogurts like going to the museum? I don't know. Because they're cultured. Uh, please follow us on Instagram, mainly Instagram. You can come to a Facebook group. I am working on the Discord. Which one? Oh, Discord. The Discord is in the works. Nobody knows what that is. The what? Facebook? Everybody Discord. knows what Facebook. The face. The Discord will be okay. Here. Are we doing the Facebook group or page? I need to know. Ooh, I'm confused. You don't know because you're not on the Facebook like I am. I'm cool. I try to get on there every now and then. I'm cool. I posted some shaking. stuff on Twitter. Oh, God. Oh, what man. Do do? What are you posting? I don't like Twitter. You get to say everything that you want in 144 characters, and then you just post it, and then some people retweet it, and some people gripe at you, and some people you offend. I offend. I yes, offend greatly. You do. I'm the Dave Chappelle of podcasting. <laughs> you wish. Oh, yeah. You I am. Wish. I am. Sticks and stones, baby. Hey. If you were just as funny I am charismatic. I am charismatic. I oh, am curious for somebody Different to declare. Between charisma That's like saying we like to have being, fun here. We do like to have fun here, and I am charismatic, and I no, am also humble. <laughs> Super humble. Super humble. Wait, Enrique, what? Did you say something? Yeah, he's. Why is his mic on? Stop! Stop interrupting. Let the boy speak. Go on, Enrique. There's a difference between charismatic and manipulative. Uh, it was a mistake. It was a mistake. I'm it was sorry. Speak. My bad. Why'd you let okay. him speak? <laughs> Sit over there and eat your Zatarans. <laughs> the San Francisco treat. The uh, board games that we want to talk about today are rather salty. It's underwater cities, which I think it would be duly noted that some people have described it as being similar to terraforming Mars. I would like to say similar or similar. Similar. No. No. <laughs> no. It's not simu. There's no you. There's no you. Sima. Sima. Yes. All right. So it's similar. Thank you. To terraforming Mars. But before we do that, I'd like to read some fan mails. We have fans, and they send us mails. And we also have female fans as well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Troy. Do you, did we ever figure out how to pronounce his name? It doesn't matter how to pronounce his last we'll name. We'll just stick with Troy. We'll just stick with Troy. Troy? Twa? <laughs> Maybe he's from Australia. Maybe that's it. I think his name is actually Troy. Uh, Troy is a... He was just talking about some of the board games that we were discussing. Talking about... Oh, he was writing us about the term walkabout. Are you ready for this? He says... "My under Yes, yes, because you used the term walkabout. Ye? You or did? You did. Me? Yeah. My understanding, this is Troy, of the term is that some sort of rite of passage... For the indigenous Australians, usually as a lesson, adolescents, I think it's quite significant spiritually. But 
as has been the case with most of our cultural heritage, we white men have taken the term and become synonymous with something, with someone just wandering off. To be honest, some of your more political correct types will probably accuse you of being racist if you use the term walkabout. So no, I've not personally gone on walkabout, generally in Australia, unless you possess some sort of Mick Dundee level bushcraft skills. Just heading off into the bush means you will die horribly. What's in the bush? That just out in the woods. We use the term woods Two here. in the bush? In the bush. But uh, Better one in the hand. I always better heard. than two in the bush. Is that a saying they have? <laughs> that's not. I don't think that that's not right. Wait, what? It, it's what? just the center of the country, right? The yeah. bush? Is, or is it the desert? I don't know. Okay, well, then they say bush. Are there bushes in the desert? Uh, this podcast is so ignorant. Oh, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> we don't know So anything. Troy talks about his family has a trophy that the winner of the most recent game takes ownership of. Any game counts. The holder can only refuse three challenges to play before they must play or forfeit the family cup. Currently, his six-year-old, Mackenzie, uh, is the holder. Mick? Mackenzie. Mackenzie. And he has a son named Cooper who desperately wants him to buy Memoir 44, which he should. Wait, isn't Chris's son's name Cooper? I don't know. I keep... What's Chris's son's name? Oh no, that was uh, Captain America. That was a uh, Captain America's son. His name. Uh, oh, why are you putting me in kids' names? Because kids' names are always. Because I always. I can't even I remember my own kids' names. Okay. His K kids' name is. Ian. No, you're terrible oh. with names. How dare you? <laughs> Where did I get Ian insulting from? Insulting everybody's names. It's a uh, Fleming. <laughs> Flynn. It is Flynn. Flynn. It's Flynn. Finn. Finn. It's Finnegan. <laughs> it's Finnegan. It's Finnegan. Yes. Yes. We made it in a roundabout, not a walkabout. Troy, Wait. you should buy uh, your son Cooper, your son Cooper, uh, Memoir 44, because I love, love Memoir 44 as a game, Just uh, which reminds me that Richard Borg just passed away, and he was the designer of Memoir 44. It's a great game. It's a great game. I have two copies of it, actually, because I have the Overlord expansion, and I'm waiting for my six-year-old to get old enough to get old enough, basically, my six-year-old to get old enough to play Memoir 44, because I love uh, it. I think Troy has one more child. What is this child's name? Molly? That's not how you say her name. You, you well, butchered her spelled. name. Maylie? It's M-A-H. That's generally Ma. Molly? Mahli? I think it's Molly. Molly. Why do you what see, why don't you research you, yeah. this stuff? I don't I know how to people spell names in a way that I'm not familiar with, and I just have to go with what I know. She loves Ticket to Ride. T T R. Which is a good game. OG. I have I have the OG Ticket to Ride put up. So Troy's like me. Troy's a family man. <laughs> He's a family man. He's got a bunch but of But you're kids. always over here what? drinking. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Troy understands that occasionally you have to get away from your kids. It happens. Every oh, father. Right now, your daughter said, where's daddy? <laughs> Wait, where's where's daddy? He's in garbage again. <laughs> your wife hates me. <laughs> oh, she does. But this makes me a better husband because now, you know, when you're around your kids all the time, they really get irritated. <laughs> and you just have to, like, break off unwind for a little uh, bit, drink a fifth, and then go home. There you go. It works well. I slapped your table. You I'm did. sorry. It's going to reverberate. It reverberates. Reverberations. Suffocation. <laughs> Constipation. Oh, Enrique. Yes? How have you been lately? The constipation made me remember that you were here. <laughs> I know that recently you've been having a lot of gastrointestinal problems. You've been doing all right? Yeah. Good. All right. All right. Enough of that. Uh, so that's the fan mail. Wait a minute. I've got more. Fan you, read, mail. you read one. We've got people fan mail us, man. We have all types of people. Uh, Paul wrote in. He talked about Pipeline. Paul, we bought Pipeline. We paid, played Pipeline. We paid the Piper and played Pipeline. We're going to have to do a review on it. I have some deep thoughts, deep thoughts, like Jack Handy thoughts mm. on Pipeline. Uh, Marco wrote in, Hello, guys. Just give my two cents. I think the best acting role of Sly, referring to Sylvester Stallone, I'm assuming, was in Copland, one of the few films he actually yeah. looked like he was acting. Still really enjoy your podcast. I remember him doing that, because anytime somebody gains like 50 pounds, they're serious about the role. If I gained 50 pounds for a role. 
I've been preparing for a role my whole life. If they ever want to do the story of... Uh, Gobby? No. What's Gain his... 200 pounds. Why don't you play me in a movie? I couldn't. How would you? How would I play you? What would you do? Very slowly. And I would just stick uh, like a lot. Just, just, just walk around. Just, just like... Do I gesticulate? You've used that term in reference you to me do before. a lot sometimes. What do I'm I not... do? You just, you at times when I'm expressing myself very succinctly <laughs> and I am making a point... I'm making a clear, concise point that you can't rebut. You'll go, oh, all right. right. Oh, you, you're a butt. Yes, that's exactly. You start making noises and you hear me with one a cheap that uses shot. uses words. <laughs> nice comeback. And what? Yes, I use words. Words. Well, that must be nice. Hey. What is that guy actor's name? Who? The actor, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Right. If I gained 50 pounds and they need a biography done of him, I look exactly <laughs> like you him. You would. You yeah, really do. would. I, do. I can do. So if they ever do Phil, uh, Seymour Hoffman, if they ever need. Philip Seymour Hoffman's best role. Best role? Yes. <sighs> Twister. <laughs> do you remember? The- <laughs> That was because that was filmed in my hometown. That was like my area where I grew up where they filmed Twister up north there in Oklahoma. What was the name of it? Uh, there's like they did up north in the northern part of Oklahoma where all the ter- uh, like Chickasaw, yeah, Choctaw, I remember them all that showing up that north. water tower and had a name yes. on there that I know yes. the name of it. Yes, that's all up there. Yes. And when that show came out, that was very disconcerting to see a show that was shot. In your area, like you recognize the landmarks, and yeah. then to see the guy from Princess Bride get killed, oh. that was devastating. <laughs> that was devastating. He got done wrong in that. He movie. did get done wrong, and tornadoes don't do that. They to, don't what? They don't seek out Carrie. <laughs> they they're, they're, they're not sentient. <laughs> they're not sentient. They're not like this is the bad guy. I'm going to throw a oh. throw a ladder at him. Oh, um, that's a great show. Uh, Twister came out in my heyday as a teenager. I was like 18, Man, was 19, great. came out in 96, I think. Go to the movies. That movie was awesome. It's, it's Helen Hunt so, in her heyday. Oh, there was nothing better. Bill than Pullman? Hunt. Nothing. No, wait. Yeah, it was, was Bill, Bill, wasn't Pullman? it? it was Bill. Remember. Wasn't it Bill? Is that the right Bill? Yeah. It was a great that show. That was a good movie. And to make it, and this was before nowadays, everybody, kids get, the tornadoes have sharks in them. But back in my day, <laughs> <laughs> which I had experienced a tornado firsthand, but currently we're just now recovering. Florida's recovering from the uh, hurricane, uh, which name leads me. I'm terrible with hurricane names. Dorian? Dorian. Something they like used that? to name hurricanes all after women. They've stopped that now. They should make them hemicanes. <laughs> Am I right? That's. Never is that me. why they did it? No, no, you're fooling me. I'm glad That's I'm like dr- an old stupid joke. I'm, dra- <laughs> I'm glad I'm drinking coffee because if I wasn't, I'd be really irritated right now. I think you'd have put one over on a hurricane. I get it. That was good. Remember when they call, call him the extreme? He's the extreme. I don't know who's the extreme. The Bill Pullman is Bill Pullman the right oh, guy? Yeah, the extreme. No. Paxton. 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 Bill Pullman is Independence Day. He's the guy that we will not go quietly into the night. Yes. He's the president. Bill Paxton is game over, man. Game Game over. over. Uh, Uh, Bill Paxton's best movie, go. (laughs) (laughs) This show is about board games. Okay, let's get back on track. Uh, We're going to talk about a game that's very salty. Underwater cities. Get it? Because they're salt Mm, water. Very good. Thank you. I was trying to think of a segue. I was like, did it have tracks in it? No, it did not. It had tunnels, but Rike kept calling them roads. Yeah. Yeah. Where we're going, Marty, we don't need roads. roads. Underwater Cities is a game about building underwater cities. Why am I not? (laughs) Why am I so slow right now? I'm sorry. My brain just reset. Give me a moment. Thank you for nailing that uh, quick (laughs) intro to this game. This is why I'm the That's quite the synopsis. I am the primary host. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. I'll talk about it. (laughs) Go ahead. Get it. All right. Underwater Cities is a game. (laughs) (laughs) It is a game. Why are you laughing at that part? Keep going. It is indeed a game. Vladimir um, Suchi is the designer. I'll Vladimir Suchi. I love that name. I believe he also did Steam Time. He also did uh, Century Time? Spice Road. Really? And I believe uh, that uh, Starship Samurai that we 
kind of sort of didn't like. Oh, did he do that? Yeah, uh, okay. Did I do well, that? You got swings and you got me. They're right there. Steam time. Did he do steam time? Enrique, go over there and check that out real quick for me. Uh, so, Underwater Cities is a game that has been very much compared to Terraforming Mars. Which is, yes. Which is an apt comparison. Does it say Vladimir? Oh, no, my bad. My bad. Rudiger Dorn. Completely wrong guy. Completely wrong guy. So, I will strike all that from this podcast. I will not because I get tired of editing. Editing this podcast is a lot of work because when you talk as sporadically and as nonsensical as we do, it's hard to know what to edit out and to keep in. But we press on. Underwater Cities for one to four players. I had it all set up to play solo. It should be very simple. Basically, you will block, block off the spots on the board that you go to and you play solo. But it's been compared to Terraforming Mars quite simply because instead of Terraforming Mars, you're terraforming an underwater city. You're building a city, you build these domes, you build tunnels, then you build another dome. So you're connecting a city to a city to a city to a city. And then around those domes, you can build all these other laboratory uh, uh, desalinization plants for, I guess, water and the green. You desalinate things. Desalinate. You take the salt out of it. Right. So, so like right. if this so podcast you would, you would do is too salty. For water. So you would, Walter, you not Walter. Walter. Walter so Goggins. So if you take, so yeah, take yeah, the yeah, water if you take out. Walter Goggins take Walter and you out. took the salt, salt out of it, you would have like Walter anybody? Cronkite. See, keep drinking, Jerry. Okay, Pierre. Yeah, what have is take another sip. Uh, tealing. Briefly, not to interrupt you, but Teeling Irish Whiskey is one of my favorite whiskeys. The small batch, not the uh, it is, uh, malt. Single, single malt. Single malt. I like the small batch rather the than the single, single malt. The single malt is very good. It's a little bit smokier. Mm. Me and Jerry like <sighs> the regular. That is very nice. You can have this back. I will have that back. Enrique, grab that. Uh, grab uh, the Soul Trains um, decanter. decanter for me. The other one. Nope, that's a bottle. That's a decanter. That's a decanter. You'll get there someday, Enrique. So, Underwater Cities, you're building all these things uh, that has been compared very much to... Would you say it's because apparently it's like you're terraforming under the sea? Under, under the, the sea! sea. <laughs> oh, this podcast is terrible. <laughs> Go ahead. No. This is oh, the... I- the you know what's bad? What? The more terrible, probably the podcast is to most people, the more I enjoy it personally. The live action, uh, it, Disney keeps making all these Little live Mermaid. Action. Oh, they're going to make it. They're making a live action Little Mermaid. That's what you're going to say? Yes. I thought that was what you were going to say. No, I didn't know. Yes. Okay, they're making I, everything else live action. I just found out they're making a live action. Are you ready for this? Dun, 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 dun. Lady and the Tramp. Yes. That is terrible. Yes. Terrible. Did you, so are the dogs going to talk? I guess. Like it they did in The to. Lion King. Oh, God. It's awful. Oh, Absolutely oh, awful. Well, there he goes another part of this my childhood. This is Tullamore Dew. What? Tullamore Dew. I never heard of it. It's an Irish whiskey. It's fairly on the uh, bargain side of Irish whiskey. <laughs> bargain side? <laughs> the bargain. equate brand of whiskey. Yeah. Here you go, Enrique. I put that back up there. Is that what you were keeping? Soul trains. I put that in the decanter. Very much used. Thank you very much. Okay, so Underwater Cities, back on track, Jerry. Focus. Continue. I am. I'm here. Um, it's basically, your, how many spots are on the board? You have four, is there four? Twelve. There's 12 spots on the board. I don't know this to be true. Okay. Uh, well, there's either four or five per side. So okay. it's either 12 or 15 to me. You have three actions per round. You can... Put this little. Your it's not a worker. It's what is an it? Action. An action. Token. Action token. It's a piece of cardboard. It's a piece of cardboard. You put it down, and there's twelve to fifteen spaces. We don't know. We don't do research before game. We just played the game. We're not here. We don't. We're know. not here for research. <clears throat> and you gather your resources. You're going to gather kelp, uh, steel plast, money, and. What's the other one? Bioplasty? Bioplasm. Bioplasm? Not to be uh, like ectoplasm. That's from ghosts. And neoplasm is cancer. Okay. So not those. You want bioplasm. So you're going to gather these so that you can therefore build your cities. Correct. 
you can build your cities. So once you've built a city, then you can use another resource and build these. What are they? They're just buildings around the city. They're, they're yes, they're, they're, they're just manufacturing. the city grow. What's the point of those buildings Des- thematically? Desalination, which obviously you take salt out of water so you can make it potable. Okay. As opposed to non-potable. And then you have the little uh, kelp farms, which is for food. And then you okay. have the little science stations. The labs. The labs, which Give help you. you make science. Because science is a tangible object <laughs> in this make game. Science. <laughs> Let's make science. But also somehow... Let's also, get together and make some science. Also helps you make uh, steel plast. Because with science, you can understand metallurgy. And that's a thing. Go ahead. I'm I continuing. Know. I don't know what you're talking about now. And if you build your... There's two types of cities. There's the cities cities. that don't have biomatter that you just make, and they don't score you victory points each round. And there's the ones that you can make with biomass that do score you victory points. But there's a third city that you can make out of rock and roll. Because that's (laughs) how how I built all my cities. Vladimir Suchi. House rules. Hashtag house so rules. So basically throughout the game, you're going to gather resources, put your pieces out there to gather resources to build cities and roads and buildings. And the more buildings you have around your city, the more points that city is worth in game. You can also buy cards that give you in game points that also provide you all these random resources and all, you know, just they break the game up, break some of the rules, etc. like every other game ever. But... As far as Terraforming Mars, Terraforming Mars is severely random. That's what it's known what, for. What, what, it has all these cards. What? Go ahead. Wait a minute before you go on to Terraforming Mars, because I'm going to get super salty about that. I don't want to be desalinated before I get to Terraforming okay, Mars. Okay, go. I'd want to talk about Vladimir Suchi and this design. So Vladimir Suchi is a designer that I I know his name. He has made games such starting back in 2007. Um, this is according to Board Game Geek. League of Six, never heard of it. Never 2009, of he made Shipyard. Oh, wow. That was him. Yeah. Horrible. Please. 2010, 20th century. Never heard of it. Shipyard is highly regarded. Okay. Well, they can regard it somewhere else. 2011, Last Will. Okay. Okay. It's, sit, it's sitting on the shelf. I like Last Will. Sitting on the 2015, shelf. 2015, The Chronicles Club. Probably which, been outdone by other uh, bidding auction games by Ryan But Canizia. a unique design. Nonetheless, uh, granted, granted, 2017, millions. 2017, he had the huge hit called Pulsar 2849. Worst title, worst title ever. But it's on it. our list to play. How do you come up with that number? 2849. 2849. It's probably, it's like eight, it's probably six, seven, five, three, last oh, four nine. of his number. Yeah, it's probably something like that. So in 2018, Underwater Cities come out. It was a big deal. I never got to play it. Gobby kept talking about it. It didn't interest me. I saw some reviews of it. I saw a gameplay of it, which greatly interests me. Whose? I just, I can't remember. It was just some random person on YouTube. I'm sorry. I would give a shout out if I could. The gameplay of this was very simple. You have three cards in your hands. Your three cards match some of the three colors that are out on the board, either green, red, or yellow. And during your turn, you're going to place an action on one of those spots that's either green, red, or yellow, and you're going to play a card. If your card matches the action space that you went to, you get to do the card. If it doesn't, you don't. That is a very simplistic mechanism. He took... Vladimir Suchi took a very simplistic mechanism and he built the framework of the game around it. And here's something that I often like to quote from one of the greatest designers of board games of all times, Mr. Martin Wallace. Mr. Martin Wallace, one time during an interview, said something that I myself filed away because I thought one of these days I might design a board game. I might need to keep this in mind. What would you design? He said, I have designs. I take over the world. Martin Wallace said that you should take one core mechanic refine it down to it and refine it. Make it as simplistic as you can and build the game around it. Don't have too many mechanics, but have one main solid mechanic that works flawlessly. I have noticed that all the senior designers, all the major designers seem to do that. They take one mechanic, they streamline it in such a way and build everything else around one central mechanic and let the game flow around that. Vladimir Suchi did that with this simple mechanic. So basically, you are incentivized to go to this area of the board on this action 
and play this card to get this benefit. There are times for which you cannot. That you have to, you you desperately want to go to this side of the board and play a card that doesn't match its color and thus don't get the benefit. But the feeling that you get from comboing your cards, from going to this green area and playing this green card and getting this benefit, and then thinking, no, I'm going to hold on to this card. You don't have a bunch of cards in your hand. You just always have three. You can well, get. Well, let's. Uh, you have. There are several different types of cards. Some cards you play are instant actions. Some cards you play. You can do an action. You keep it in your tableau, and you can do the action once per turn right. round. Right. And then there's some actions that are in game. Then there's other actions that happen during production. Which is the whole thing we won't go into right now. So he designed this one central mechanic around this. Very simple. Elegant is the term that people often for instance. Throw often throw around. For instance, I could play this my action here. It lets me do one of my action cards <clears throat> that lets me upgrade my tunnels. I do that action, it upgrades my tunnels. I have another card that says every time you upgrade a tunnel, I get a free this or that. I use that card and then you you just accumulate resources by comboing your cards. Right. This combo thing that happens when you're planning your moves is very satisfying. I don't like that. I don't. I'm not one of those people that like comboing cards and having combinations. I'm also not the type of person that likes to have all these cards scattered out everywhere. I hate that. I hate having a bunch of stuff scattered everywhere and having to remember. Oh, when I do this, I have this card that does this and blah 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 blah. That's why you hated terraforming Mars. Thus, terraforming Mars was one that I just never understood. Aside from the randomness of the card draw, I'm about to get on my soapbox about terraforming Mars, and I I will offend everybody solely and explain to them why terraforming mars is not a well-designed game Vladimir, in your opinion no not my opinion <laughs> objectively factually <coughs> okay. take it to the okay, bank okay if you say so vladimir Suchi designed underwater cities to be streamlined it has a solo variant that l- literally to corn you corn you corn co- me please co- don't corn me cone coin coin quote quote <laughs> why am i saying coin don't be corning me you're very, you are corn fused. You're very corn. That's what happened. <laughs> the solo variant of this game is is two paragraphs. It's awesome. If yes. you're a solo player, playing this game solo quickly teaches you the game. I love underwater cities. If I had played it in 2018, you love it. I love you it. You said those words. If it was Have you t- told your wife that lately? I haven't. I forget constantly. <laughs> Not- it's those kids. <laughs> if only she had three action points. <laughs> yes. If it was easy. If you had these three choices and you can combo these cards, perhaps I would. I love you. We've been married 13 years. After 13 years, you think our marriage would be elegant. Aww. But it is because I love her. Oh. You got to say that because she might listen to this. She doesn't listen to us. She hates the sound of my voice. Um, <laughs> Gord Underwater Head. Cities is would have been probably one of my favorite games of 2018. You loved it. And it, it's 2018, right? Yes. Not 2019. Okay. I do not like everything else about it. I don't like the component quality. The cards are cheap. Yeah, little domes. It's are just very cheap scatterbrained. It's it's thematically not. You don't it's, feel it's like abstract. It's abstract. You're not building any. That's why I told Jerry when we were playing. I was like, <clears throat> some games like uh, Western Legends. You can get into it. You can get into the row. You can pretend you're this guy. You can do voices. You can be silly. You can play it. Underwater cities, it's not like you can really get into character because there is no character. You're just collecting this, collect that, build this, collect this, collect that, build this. That's the game. Yeah, and it's 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 resource management with a tableau builder. And again, towards the end of the game, you start buying in-game victory cards and trying to make sure your engine is lined out. And... So let me transition into why I'm talking about it in connection with Terraforming Mars. Saw on Facebook, saw it on BGG, many people comparing Terraforming Mars to Underwater Cities, which is why I bought the game, which is why I was interested in playing it, because Terraforming Mars was so huge. Was that 2017, 2016 when it came out? uh, 17. I can't recall, but it was insane how many... How many expansions does this game have? It's insane. And P- it's rated like, what is it, ranked number 11, number 10? No. What is it rated on BGG? 
It's, if I knew how to operate BGG, I'd look it's, right now. It's way up there. It is highly respected in terms of board games. I never it's really... It's in the top 10. Never sure. really liked it. It was okay. I enjoyed it. I understood why people liked it. But there are some fundamental issues. Fundamental. Fundamental. Exactly. Not fundamental. No. Fundamental yes. issues with terraforming Mars that you don't see in underwater cities. This is my biggest complaint. And uh, Gombe played under uh, played terraforming Mars solo for the longest time. And I made the comment, if you would separate the cards out, the blue and the red and the green and all the various cards into different piles where you knew which type of card you were drawing from, I, from, I bet you could beat the game. The first solo game that I played, I did exactly that. And guess what? I won. And said, wait a minute. The randomness of Terraform and Mars, this huge deck of cards that you're drawing from, really takes away a lot of the strategy. So in Terraforming Mars, when you're drawing these cards or drafting them, you have to pay for the cards and then keep them in your hand, and then you have to pay to play them, but you can't play them unless you meet, unless the board meets Terraforming these... Mars is number three. It's number three? Yes. It's number three. Gloomhaven Pandemic Legacy Season 1. You're kidding me. Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars, according to the board game community, is the third greatest game ever invented. Yes, but I mean, board game. The board game one hundred has lost a lot of esteem. I have lost faith in humanity just because of that very thing. Pandemic Legacy Season One, everybody loved it, so they just rate, 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 rate. Well, they're even talking about tapestry. It's like getting either tens or ones, and people have not even played the game. Tapestry, so, the board future Stolmeyer game. game. So, I mean, it Don't really doesn't it. matter. But yes, Terraform Mars is a mega, mega hit. So, Terraforming Mars, here's what's wrong with the game. Number one, it's too long. Number two, the drafting mechanic that is the variant of the game where you draft cards makes the game even longer, but that's how the game should be played. You should draft those cards. Mm -hmm. Number three, what... Underwater Cities gets right is that it segregates all the beginning cards into eras. Era 1, 2, and 3. So when you're in this stage of the game, you're drawing from Era 1, Era 2, and then Era 3. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Terraforming Mars could learn from that. That is a sign of a great designer knowing which cards should be in play and when they should be in play. Well, you may have a card that you can play it when your oxygen is nearly complete or right. your heat's nearly <clears throat> complete or whatever. In underwater cities, you can flip the player boards where you're building your cities, and there is some difference on the back of the boards. There's some asymmetry, but it doesn't break the game. In Terraforming Mars, you can have these companies that straight up will break the game if you get the right cards in your hand. If I have steel and I get this card that allows me to use steels to build fighters, and those fighters give me victory points every single round, I'm going to stomp you to the ground. Right. You will not convince me in any way, shape, or form using any type of spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet, to convince me that Terraforming Mars is a balanced game. It is no, not. It can't be. If you were to get Vladimir Succi on the phone, do you have his number? Yes. Get him on the phone right now. I guarantee you the man would explain to you how well-balanced Underwater Cities actually is. He didn't put anything in that game that would sway the game into one person's a favor or another. Hello? Don't. Hang up on him. Vlad? Is it's that you? Prob it's probably like 4 o'clock in, in the morning. Czechoslovakia? Czech in Czechoslovakia right now. I always wanted to go to Prague. The That's Czech a, Republic. That is a beautiful... Czechoslovakia is old, right? Like yeah. It's Czech it's and Czech Slovakia. Uh, I went down a river that was between Poland and the Czech Republic. It was beautiful. I can't remember. It was a rafting trip. Uh, many years ago. Prague is like one of the cities I'd like to see over there. I'd love to see That's Prague. That's about as far east Europe as I want to go, though. Really? Mm. I would go into Russia in a heartbeat. Mm. I'd go to St. Petersburg in a moment. I love it. Really? Just a beautiful area. Why? Just because the history behind it. For example? Well, just it's like one of the oldest cities in the world. The architecture. like you, There's certain... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Russia has one of the oldest cities in the world. We're talking about Egypt, Iraq. Well, in comparison, <laughs> I mean, you just said one of the oldest you, cities in the world. Just, all right, what? You just, what I'm talking about like thousand, like China, 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 
thousands of years old. Where does Russia rank? It's not thousands of years old, is it? I don't know. I'm just saying. Well, you said it. You said it's one of the oldest cities in the world. Okay. <laughs> you Excuse spoke. Me. You may have misspoke me. just then. St. Petersburg. How is old is it? to Wikipedia. <laughs> St. Petersburg is a Russian port city on the Baltic Sea. Uh-huh. It was the imperial capital for two centuries. 200 years. Yes, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's so old. Founded in 1703. <laughs> <laughs> By Peter. By that Peter is... was so awesome, they called him Peter the Great. Petersburg. Yes. <laughs> it rem- <laughs> You know how great it is. Peter and I understand ourselves because he had a city and they're like, Peter, what do you name it? He's like, Petersburg. Obviously. Petersburg. My family had Bakersfield. He had Petersburg. <laughs> we understand this. The uh, It remains Russian central cultural center with venues such as the Marinsky Theater hosting opera and ballet and the State Russian Museum so- showcasing Russian art. I love... I love the Russian arts. I like their... Like uh, what? Uh, they have the best writer ever. Like Chekhov. All those guys. Not, not, From Star Trek? Not, not that, that guy, no. <laughs> Nuclear Wessels? Uh, yeah, all the writers and all their... I mean, their their architecture is just... In com- it's neat. I like the little round yes. spires on their buildings. Uh, on the Kremlin. But then again, I like the opera stuff. I like that. We just came from the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. We just came the other day uh, from watching... This is going to sound so hillbilly but when what? you say it, but at the same time, we went and watched uh, Empire Strikes Back. How is that hillbilly? It's hillbilly because they cut the soundtrack off of it and then had the Dallas Symphony Orchestra play the soundtrack live in the theater. Oh, I've heard of that and before. It's pretty awesome. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. I like I'd like that. to see that. You should have came, but you didn't come, but your no, stepdaughter too, did, and she expensive. loved it. Oh, well, yes. And also, uh, when I was watching The Empire Strikes Back, there was something that... You did know, you, you f- notice anything new in the movie? I did. I was telling Enrique about this. This bothered me greatly. So we're watching Empire Strikes Back. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, Vader is... <laughs> this is dad? This is what? dad. Uh, they do like the worst paternity <laughs> reveal ever. <laughs> but during... Maury shows up. <laughs> Maury shows up. <laughs> you are oh, the father! father. Uh, oh. During the uh, infamous oh, ra- light, lightsaber fight. You have betrayed me, Maury. I'm sitting next to my seven-year-old who has watched this show before in the past, right. but doesn't remember the details. She has a seven-year-old ADHD attention span. So she's watching in the theater, so she's wrapped attention. And there's the lightsaber fight, which my little girl just loves this lightsaber fight. And all of a sudden, Luke... The gets, one between Luke and Darth? Yes, and Luke <laughs> gets his hand chopped off. It's like, not quite as exciting as you remember as a child. No, but as they're fighting... <laughs> It's just this scene where all of a sudden they cut the Luke and his hand just gets lopped off and my little girl's like, <gasps> I'm like, oh, did you, <laughs> did you miss that? Did you miss she don't remember that? No, she didn't remember that. And she's just devastated by this guy's hand just going, <laughs> and it was weird when they shot He never it. bled. He doesn't bleed because it was cauterized. Because it's cauterized. Yeah. yeah. Cauterizes it. By that Everybody knows that lightsabers <laughs> cauterize. <laughs> uh, Often used in medicine. So <laughs> this gets me talking about Star Wars. We're going to segue this here in a second. Um, I'm going to come out and say it right now. I have been a Star Wars fanboy for a long time. This upcoming Star Wars film looks like the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> I am not excited in one way, shape, or form of it. This whole weird double lightsaber thing, Darth Ray. Darth Ray. I, I don't like it. I'm not. If she ends up Darth Ray, I'm done with Star I'm, Wars. Oh, no, no, I'm not done with Star Wars because I kid you not, Disney, you've got my money for the Mandalorian. That well, looks awesome. It looks really good. And here's the thing. What about the upcoming Obi Wan series? Uh, hello there. <laughs> what? It's just him going, hello there. Just, just that, knocking on doors. Just hello, hello there. there. You know, well, hello there. if I was, if I was, you know, you just want him just to show up at your house and say hello there. <laughs> just, that was just the greatest. <laughs> Can I get you on my answering machine? Hello there. Obi-Wan. <laughs> it's his new business. He just, puts his voice on answering machines. <laughs> Uh, Poor Obi. But the man. If they go Darth Dark, Darth Dark, Darth Ray, Darth Ray. Like I mean, the whole series, the whole thing to me. This is DJ was all excited. He's like, if she goes dark, and then Ben goes w- light, like a switch, <laughs> like a switch. I'm just like, no, that wouldn't no, work. That's, that's that's not gonna work. 
No. That's not going to That work. would betray everything everybody believes in this series so yeah. far, that she is the new great hope of the Jedi. And that won't happen. Disney's and not going to be Rise of Sky. Okay, they've already had the last Jedi. So who's the last Jedi? Her? I guess. We don't know. I don't know. We're, everybody's confused. We're we don't all, even I've know. Been, I've been confused from the get-go. Confused. The only thing I know is that I like Adam Driver. I think I he's like the, Razy oh. Diddley. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Razy Diddley. Uh, Adam Driver is probably the best actor of the month N- of bunch. Niece of Bo Diddley. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> if anybody gets that reference... <laughs> Please write us at boardgamestops uh, at gmail.com so God we can feel. I really hope it turns. I, 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 the only reason I trust that it's all going to end up happy go lucky is because JJ is an acolyte of Steven Spielberg Aww. who makes all his movies happy end up go- with a good ending. Yeah, that's Schindler's I like List. A happy ending. <laughs> Schindler's List. Well, except for that. Yeah. He drives everything, making it really dark, but then he tries to upbuild it. Right. Like he has that form. Yes. Uh, but the Mandalorian. I'm saying that it right. Really good. I'm saying that right now. That's Boba Fett. Wait, what? You heard it here first. You're saying you think that is him? No, I hope it's not him. I hope not. I let's, hope not. Let's do something new. Let's do something new. But I guarantee you, now that they've canceled the movie, they are foaming at the mouth to make that something else. That's just how. This is how it works. Did you know? I did know. Go ahead. Speaking of, oh, you say Steven Spielberg? I think Jurassic Park. I think Velociraptors. Do you know they were slightly bigger than chickens? Yes. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Is that how you do this? Yes. Steven Spielberg, I mean, Jurassic how, Park, Kevin Bacon. Like, they were like terrifying. They had feathers. But they're slightly bigger than chi- Like I could kick a chicken. <laughs> I'm not afraid of a raptor. <laughs> you ever kicked a chicken? I've kicked lots of chickens. You've kicked chickens. They were in my way. How dare you? I've You've had already got a Excuse call, me. a cease and desist from Zatarans. If PETA calls I us about your chicken your kicking eggs. eggs. <laughs> Get away. I'm not scared of a chicken. I'm not a chicken. You're a chicken. So, therefore, I collect their eggs, and if they get in my way, I nudge them You've with my boot. You've never collected eggs from a I chicken. have collected eggs. Where? You don't need to know. You don't know. The Walmart, I'm the store, Walmart, the the Walmart dairy I've section. Checked, I've been pecked <laughs> by many of hens. What type of chickens did you have? <laughs> oh, I am hen pecked. Go ahead. Go ahead. Make that joke. I made it for you. Go ahead. Oh, uh, What, what kind type of, of chickens? Huh? What type of chickens? White rocks? Rhode Island reds? Obviously. Common eckers? You yes. don't even know. Yes. I made those three names up. The first one. <laughs> you don't even know. You don't even know. The only chickens you've seen have been from Tyson. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's really good. Uh, underwater cities. In terms of recommendation. Oh, Rike's here. Rike. Oh, um, yeah. Nice to have you. Yeah. Glad everything's Welcome going Welcome to the well. program. Uh, keep us in touch since you're the president of the Discord. How's that going? It's not going because we yeah, haven't got it set up. Have you got it fired up yet? But it will be. No, we can it will it set be up. soon. Oh. And uh, we're going to have a section on that Discord where you can ask Enrique anything. AMA, I think they call it. Is that? <laughs> ask. It would be wait, wait, say that again? Ask me anything. That's AMA. Ask Enrique anything. AA. Yeah. Well, so, that's never a good thing. Or against medical advice. Either one. <laughs> uh, you can answer whatever people say because you're like a self-help host. You can like have... Insight into the world. I guess. What did you think of Underwater Cities? Underwater Cities it was a nice game. <laughs> yeah, it's got like a question. But, <laughs> What's that? Oh, we're talking about this game. Oh, what did you think about Underwater we, Cities? Uh, underwater Cities. Are we still yeah, that's discussing we about this game. Do you like it better than Terraforming Mars? Uh, I don't think I've played Terraforming Mars, and if I've and if I have, I don't remember playing it. It's been so long; we probably haven't been played it. So yeah, but Underwater Cities, did you like it? I did. It was how much on a scale of one to ten chicken wings? You're really basing this on chicken, on chicken wings. wings. <sighs> the ultimate of testimonies. What type of chicken wings are we like? What's your favorite like? type of chicken wings? Hmm. <laughs> He's thinking hard about it. Popeyes. Oh, you got me. On okay, Popeyes. Popeyes. One to ten on Popeyes chicken wings. Go. Give it a nine, at least. That is there. That's all you got to know right there. Nine Popeye's chicken wings out of ten. Friends, families, loved ones, 
We appreciate you listening to the Board Game Snob Podcast. It is dare to say that Underwater Cities is approved by us. Even though it's been late, we wish we had played it in 2018. This is probably my favorite. Yes, it is my favorite Vladimir Suchi design. And it's it's got an excellent rule book. It's very clear and concise. Even though there's the components aren't that great, it's still a great game. If you're into Euros, if you're into resource management, if you're into in, some light engine building, uh, you're not going to go wrong with Underwater Cities. Uh, any, anyways, this is Jerry. We enjoy you. Thank you for coming. This is Gabby. This is an... Thank you for listening to the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. Stay classy.